Negotiation is a large part of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. If you're a businessman, a salesperson, a CEO, or an athlete, we all get into situations that require us to negotiate or haggle to get what we want at the right price. So, how do you make sure you always come out on top? Welcome back, hustlers, to yet another video of Just Hustle. Today, we're going to be talking about how you could become the perfect negotiator. If this is your first time on the channel, well then here's why you're in the right place. At Just Hustle, we talk about anything and everything related to finance, especially trends that could potentially make it rain dollar bills around you. So, probably a good idea to hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. You might need to bargain for work or when you travel to different countries and are treated like a tourist at the popular markets. Regardless, this life skill always comes in handy. So, how to be a pro? Let's start with three things that you've got to stop saying. First, I can't bargain or negotiate. Everyone can. People often say that it's just not me. What they really mean is that they don't know how to or aren't confident to do it. Bargaining or negotiating may seem like a tense conversation between two people. That isn't really it though. The truth is, Negotiating is generally a way of finding a win-win situation, or at least letting people believe so. You don't necessarily have to be pushy or aggressive or overly dominant. That never gets the job done. Listening, staying calm, and smiling go a long way in making sure the discussion remains pleasant for everyone. Second, only cheapskates haggle. Smart people haggle and bargain all the time. Just going ahead with whatever offer is put in front of you isn't what a smart person does. Rather, that's how people get swindled. Successful business people do their homework and put counter offers on the table. This way, they only pay what they believe is worth the price of the item or service. Third, this isn't worth my time. There are times when you're at a store or a market while on vacation and think that negotiating a reasonable price isn't worth the time. Or you might feel like you shouldn't really bargain for something so little. This is true to an extent, but it doesn't matter about the size or value of the item in question. It always depends on the situation like if you're getting fleeced at a store or if you think you're getting the short end of the stick in a business deal. The point is, not everything is worth negotiating for, but you need to pick your battles wisely. Okay, now that you have these three thoughts out of the way, here are seven quick tips that would help make you a pro negotiator. Number one, never make the first offer. Making the first offer can put you in a weaker position. Always find out the price that is being offered first and then make a counter offer. This gives you the upper hand. It helps you understand the position of the other person and information for you to strategically counter. Don't ask for their bottom price either because that gives less room for negotiation and the price might be higher than you intend it to be. Offer what you think is fair, study their reaction, and then take it from there. Number two, cash talks. Money in hand always talks. This mostly works for smaller deals, obviously. However, flashing cash makes things more realistic. This is because you can always agree on a deal, but want to renegotiate when the time comes to transfer it. Cash in hand closes the deal then and there. Obviously, during business deals, there are legally binding documents to close deals that safeguard either party. So maybe carrying cash around when you're out to purchase something is a good idea. Number three, conversations go a long way. Negotiation is straight business. Even sellers know that you're around to purchase their goods. One method to get a good deal is to charm your way to it keep a smile, and have a friendly conversation with the seller. You can even start the conversation by inquiring about the products. This could lead to discovering shared interests and stories. Humor goes a long way as well. The friendlier you are to the seller, the better price you will get. Not just that, it also makes it easier to negotiate since it becomes a lighter conversation rather than just a business deal. Number four, set standards. It isn't just about setting the standards in your mind for a good deal, but sticking to it. If the offer isn't as per your standards, 
Then, do not be afraid to walk away from it. Remember, a better deal is always around the corner. Before you walk away, let them know your offer in case they change their mind. Negotiation is a mind game at the end of the day. It always comes down to who wants it more, the seller or you. Make the seller believe that they need the sale more than you do. Number five, do your homework. It's always best to walk into any negotiation, big or small, with some amount of research. Learn as much as you can about the product you want to purchase before making an offer or listening to one. Don't be afraid to ask questions about it to people who know about the product or the seller itself. This way, even the seller would be careful about swindling you. Doing prior research before talking to the seller gives you an advantage. It's always best to know competitive prices as well. It's easier now thanks to the internet. Make use of it. Number six, silence is golden. When the seller is explaining the product and showing it to you, make sure to keep your reactions to a minimum. Even if you're excited about it, don't show it because that shows how impressed you are and how much you want it. The more they know you want it, the higher they can quote. Responding with a hmm or just a nod always works. It makes the seller try to make the product more interesting and grab your attention. Most people find silence awkward and try to fill it up. Again, negotiations are a mind game. The silence can make the seller put a sweet deal on the table because it makes them feel the pressure to sell. Number seven, ask about other offers and deals. Showing hesitation works towards dropping the price. However, some sellers are used to people negotiating and don't entertain it as much. Mentioning other deals you've found elsewhere can help start off a negotiation or even clubbing an additional buy to make the deal sweeter. However, a nicer way to let them know that you're looking for a good deal is by asking about offers and coupons available. This way, they don't just get the idea that you're looking for a deal, but also understand the kind of deal you have in mind. If not a negotiation, they might show you other similar products that are on sale or have offers or that might just be in the price range you're looking at. Now that you've used all these tricks to bargain, shake on it and always make sure to leave on a good note. It makes all the parties involved happy with the deal. If you ever go back to the same seller, know that you'll get a better deal next time around. So hustlers, go out there and use these tips to become expert negotiators and remember, you might not nail it for the first time. Keep at it and you'll always come out with a win. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you have any other tips and tricks when it comes to bargaining small purchases or negotiating big deals, let us know in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Just hustle.